Well, hello, and welcome to the Disgruntled Traveler Podcast. Today's story centers around this dude I met at a beach in Durez, Albania. I'm going to call him the muscle jerk. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you why, because this is an interesting story. I don't know. I just, I admire people that like to work out and everything. I mean, I'm not, I like to take care of myself personally, but I'm not so into lifting weights where that every single muscle in my body has to be completely fat free and look completely perfect. You know what I mean? But anyway, we'll get into the story. So I'm in Durez, Albania. And if you don't know where Durez, Albania is, it's, um, it's a small country on the Adriatic Sea coast, I believe is the Adriatic Sea. Um, it's in the Balkans. Balkans, Balkans, Balkans. So anyway, it's in the Balkans. It's on the coast. Open walkway of sand. It's just a big, huge beach. You know, it's got some rocks on it and you can hang out and fish and, and sun yourself and all of that good stuff. But um, when I went, it was actually cold. Uh... There was a lot of wind. It was chilly. You actually had to wear a jacket. So, yeah, it wasn't exactly beach weather. But it was all right. It was all right. I was there for a month vacationing, and I was like, you know what? Let's go take a walk along the beach. It was actually a sunny, it was sunny that day. So it made the wind and the cold bearable. So I'm, you know, I'm walking out. There's like this, like I said, there's this sort of like a fishing pier that was made out of giant rocks that you could like, rocks and sand, you can walk out, jet out of the ocean. But along the edges there was the actual beach where you could just like sit on a rock and sun yourself or do whatever, which most people were doing, right? So... I'm, you know, I already did my thing. I walked out on the edge of the pier. I'm taking pictures. I'm doing all that fun stuff that tourists usually do, right? So I'm walking back to take a walk along the beach. I'm walking off the pier and I see this guy to the right of me near the shore, near the rocks. And he's wearing, um... He's wearing a black shirt and black pants. He's got a big fluffy black beard, um, nice hair, um, tan. He was very, I don't, I don't know if he was actually tan or if his skin was actually that color, but he was like brown, tan kind of skin looking. Pretty decent looking dude. But what really, really caught my attention about this dude was that he was red, man, like from head to toe, this guy would had no fat on his body. You could tell he was in the gym probably 24 seven and literally just worked out all the time. Right. So I'm American. I mean, I'm not going to make any excuses. It's not that I wanted to hit on this guy and get his number and go out with him. No, that was like the furthest thing away from me. What I wanted to do was just get a picture of this guy because I don't know, I was just like, I was impressed. I was impressed on how his muscles, like he just looked perfect. He wasn't like super muscled out, but he, he had definitely a physique that was amazing. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. It was something I've never seen hardly on the road at all. Right. So I walk up towards the guy and he's got his earbuds in <laughs> and he's just like feeling himself. I can see him just like doing this and he's just dancing. He's dancing along the beach. He's just dancing and chilling. Looks like he was having a beer or something, right? So 
I come up into his uh, his peripheral vision, I guess, and I guess I sort of caught his eye because I was like waving at him like this, like trying to get his attention. So he pulled out his earbud and I was like, hey, I was like, um, do you mind? I held up my cell phone. I says, do you mind if I get a picture of you? Can I get a picture of you? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, come on over, right? So he loved that. So I walk up to the guy and I'm like, hey, you know, thank you. My name is Tammy. I'm from the States. And he goes, oh, he goes, cool. And, you know, and I get a picture. I said, I just want to get a picture because I've never seen anybody in such good shape like you. Um, that's it. And he's like, sure. So I get a picture of him. And then he starts rapping to me and he spoke broken English. He was, uh, he was like, you know, I'm from, he wasn't from Albania. He said he came from Kosovo. That's where he was from. The guy was from Kosovo and he was there. I don't know. He does work or something there. I don't know. Anyway, it was his day off and he was just hanging out by the beach. So we start talking. He goes, can I buy you a cup? Uh, can I get you a drink? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't drink alcohol, but I would love a cup of coffee because it's so cold outside. And he goes, oh, sure. So he goes and he gets me um, like a little espresso. I said, yeah, just give me an espresso. That's fine. Um, so he comes back with the espresso and we start talking some more on the beach. So at, at the time, he seemed like a really, like a really cool guy. Like, I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about this dude at that point. And then he's like, like, we talked for two hours, maybe three. We talked until the sun went down. So it had been two or three hours. It started getting windier and colder. I was like, look, I need to go because it's really cold out. And he's like, oh, do you have WhatsApp? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he goes, can we exchange numbers on WhatsApp? And, you know, um, maybe we can meet up again, like tomorrow and talk a little bit more. And I was like, okay, seems like a cool dude. Okay. So I exchanged WhatsApp information, right? And he's like, he messages me later that day. And he says, um, how about I meet you tomorrow at the same place at 2 p.m.? So I'm like, okay, sounds cool, 2 p.m. All right, I said, sure. So the next day comes and it's windier than it was the day before and colder. I mean, I think it was like in the 50s and 50 degree Fahrenheit and the wind made it feel like it was in the 40s. It was ridiculously windy and cold. So I'm like, oh man, he wants to meet me by the rocks near the ocean and the wind is just blowing sand and everything in my face. I was like, oh shit, I hope he's there, right? So I go out there and I'm very punctual. I don't like being late for anything. So I am there literally maybe 10 minutes to two. And I'm sort of like, there was a coffee shop that was right along the beach where I could sit inside away from the weather, order a cup of coffee and, and see him walk up. I would be able to see him walk to that spot. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, it's about two o'clock. I just had my coffee. I'm like, cool. I'm going to go up there now and meet the guy, right? So I'm out there by the rocks. I'm hanging out. It's two o'clock. It's 2.05. It's 2.10. Then it's going on 2.15 and I am freezing. Like, I am like, oh my God, where is this guy? So I'm thinking maybe he's just running late, right? So I text him real quick. I say, hey, yo, you know, remember you said we're going to meet at two by the rocks, blah, blah, blah. I'm here. Are you running late? And no answer. So I waited another five, 10 minutes outside. By then I'm freezing. I'm like, I can't do this. So I went back into the coffee shop. <laughs> I ordered another cup of coffee, right? And I'm sitting there watching out the window to see if this guy shows up or if he messages me. So now it's three o'clock, nothing from him at all, nothing, like no text message. I message him again. I says, uh, are you running late? Like what's up? Nothing. So I was like, you know what? I can't. I said, bump this dude. I'm going to go. I got things to do anyway today. I'm already out. 
I'm gonna go get some lunch right now. I'm gonna go to the grocery store and then I'm gonna make my way back to my place. And I'm already pissed at this point because he's an hour late at this point, okay? And I'm like, I'm already not feeling this. Like, if he messages me now, I might meet up with him, but I, I need a damn good excuse why he's an hour late, okay? So, I've already had my lunch, my late lunch. I bought my groceries. And by this time, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. I still have not heard a damn thing from this muscle jerk, because now he's a jerk. Okay, he was a nice guy, then he turned into a jerk. So I'm heading back to my place to get out of the cold and put my stuff up. And then lo and behold, at five o'clock, three hours after he said he was going to meet me, this is the only text message he says. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? The arrogance of this asshole, pardon my French, he says, I'm on my way at five o'clock. Okay, no explanation. No explanation why he's late. No apology. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. He just says, I'm on my way. So by this time, I'm just like, I'm pissed. And I'm thinking, do you think, honestly, just because you got all these muscles and all this crap that I'm just going to drop everything that I'm doing and I'm going to just, oh, you know, come and meet you now three hours later with no explanation. I was like, how rude are you, right? What a rude dude. So being cordial, but passive aggressive like I am, I wrote back to the guy and I says, hey, I says, well, you're going to be there by yourself because I'm not coming back there. I'm not going to meet you. You told me two o'clock. You were not there. I waited on you an hour by the beach. I messaged you twice. You never responded back. And it's already, like by that time, it was like close to freezing, 32 degrees. I said, it's too cold to be meeting outside. And so besides that, I think it was just very rude of you to not even let me know why you're late or to even apologize. So I said, no, you're going to be there by yourself. I'm not meeting you. Do you think this guy would respond and just try to maybe salvage the situation in any way? He didn't. I'll tell you what his second text message was. A red heart. A red heart. The guy sends me a heart. Again, no apologies, no explanation why he's three hours late, just sends a heart. By then, I'm super pissed. I'm like, you know what? Screw you, dude. Screw you. I, I don't even want to know you anymore. You're, for lack of a better word, an asshole. You seem like a narcissistic asshole that is totally into his body and self centered and just thinks women, I guess you think you're, you're the God to women and that they're just going to come to you whenever you say you're ready. Right. That's how I felt at that point. So <laughs> long story short, I deleted his picture. I blocked him on WhatsApp. I didn't even respond to his heart. I just blocked the guy on WhatsApp and I deleted his picture and I just chalked it up as a bad experience. I mean, what started out to be a really good experience, like I said, we, we really seemed to have hit it off and communicated well, even though he was from Kosovo and I'm from America, he spoke good enough English where we could communicate and he seemed like a decent dude. And like I said, he wasn't bad looking. He was in perfect shape. But I should have known that guys like that end up being jerks. But always remember, I am the disgruntled traveler!